I'm Zachary Fowler. And I'm the Wooded Beardsman. And this is the Wilderness Living Challenge, Maine. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> the point of the challenge is to gain or maintain our body weight while eating nothing but wild foods for seven days. Last time we did it in Canada. This time, he's come down to join me in the coastal state of Maine. It's time to go get ourselves a turkey to smoke over the fire. Oh, I, just, oh, I just want to hit the snooze. I'll go back to bed. But early bird gets the worm, right? So let's do this. I think filming wise, that was fairly uneventful. It was just like sitting there, sitting there. He's oh. working his way up, he's working his way up. I couldn't get my camera to work. It keeps shutting off for some reason. Dude, that was a rush. Yeah. Oh. He took his sweet time, like, nee, 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 nee. and then like, I'm gonna go this way, and you're like, nope. No, you're not going that no. way. You're going in. No, back. he knew something was up near the end. I'm like, oh no. Beautiful. Look at that plumage, right there. Look at that turkey. There's the beard. All right, we got our turkey. Chris is super excited. Oh, super pumped. He, he's just so psyched. I'm glad we are able to do this, get here and find the right spot. He's already been over a couple times to another spot with my apprentice Chris, and uh, they got skunked the other day by show, this, uh, or beat out by uh, a 10-year-old or ten something. Year old girl there. A 10-year-old girl that already set up when they showed up late. <laughs> so uh, we got here early. That's the trick to it: showing up super early, and boom, Bob's your uncle, and turkey on the roast. <laughs> Don't worry. Look, I found a glove. 
bomb on the side of the road. Not mine. No, I know. Ew, I don't want it. <laughs> what do you mean? It's a good glove. Put it down there. We might find a second one. <laughs> Didn't your dad teach you anything? All right, home sweet home. Turkey made it here safely. It's gonna be a long day of plucking and roasting. It's gonna be a good day. We got so much stuff to eat. We got this turkey, two lobsters, a bucket of clams that we need to shuck and put into like a clam stew so that we can um, reheat them safely, which will make them a little more chewy, but should be a good feast. bird yeah oh just gonna pluck good I don't know might be a little bit of a chore yeah we'll get it done I gotta hang it up so I can pull them downward yeah and then out I can't quite scald it I mean you could we could heat up some water in the pot and then you pour it on and scald it and yeah we could and stuff if you want ah it's not bad no it's not so bad to just gotta get it hanging the right way and it should work out Dry plucking takes a little bit of more work, but not that much. Oh yeah, you got a little bit going on pretty quick. So Chris is gonna go and pluck her and clean it. So if you wanna see that, you can watch his video. I'm gonna get the fire going and we'll be able to start cooking some breakfast. We need some breakfast, cause this is gonna cook for a while. So I think some lobster and uh, clam stew for breakfast. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yep, all, all right. this cooks. Let's do it. All right. Hot enough under there. So you keep the, the bird moist. It's just kind of surprising to me. Not for sure that could be like a staple item because we do have them. Slow and even. 
All right, you just keep at it for the next six hours. And uh, I'm gonna go over here and eat those clams that you uh, cooked up. <laughs> that doesn't sound fair. No? No, all right. Well, maybe we'll just rotate it every half an hour. Camp wives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go get another turkey. Yeah. What, you know what I need? Is I'll build a windmill that attaches to this that rotates the... <laughs> <laughs> we should have cooked it on the water wheel. I d the rivers, the stream is really low. Otherwise, we would have cooked this on the water wheel. She's on there. She's turning. We'll turn it every half hour or so. Keep loading the fire. Set your timer for six hours and come back to this video then. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we got some clams. He dished, uh, he uh, broke down all the clams that we cooked last night so that they wouldn't go bad and then stewed them again so they've been up to heat and they're sanitized if they had started to go bad. They're safe to eat now. Anything that you cook and bring to a boil for five to 10 minutes, as long as it's cooked all the way through and been boiled, it's gonna be dead. And uh, that's what we do with all of our stuff. We bring it to a boil, sanitize it again, any soups, stews, and as long as you do that uh, every 24 hours, they usually won't go bad and taste gross. I've never had one go bad and taste gross. In a really hot location, you might want to do it twice a day. Yep. A little bit of carnage from last night's feeding frenzy. The, the two of us went kind of crazy on the lobster, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, sure. We did it, though. We thought we were, we were a little overambitious. We thought we were going to eat the clams. So much for that, huh? Not going to have them. Nope. Use my bear bowl as a uh, plate. I am uh, sick of clams. You're sick of clams? You yep. only ate, did you even eat one yet? I did. Oh, he did? It's not hitting and the you spot. And you just, you decided no. you were actually, yeah. it wasn't in your head? No. Nope. Did you hit grit right off? Nope. It's just, uh, I don't know, I don't feel hungry. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah, I don't either. I feel like I should be hungry, so I'm like so hungry that I'm not hungry right now. I, could it be that we ate so much of the insides of the lobster, like the fat, we like totally over satiated ourselves or something? I feel like this part is good. Yeah, the, the stomachs? But not the nozzle. Oh, is it all really chewy right now? No. Let me see that wadobo. Maybe wadobo I, I can just feel like this is hitting fix the, everything. I feel like that's hitting the spot. Yeah. But this isn't. I don't know, I'm finding it palatable. It's not bad. Not, I am not, not digging them right now. Get it? All right. I have to say, they look more like something you blew out of your nose into a hanky at this point. When they come out of the shell, they're so closely related to the shell and then dipping into butter and my lack of hunger right now, they kind of look like boogers. I'm not getting any better as I go. It gets harder every bite. Uh huh. There's something about it's not hitting the spot. It's just too much clam and not enough butter. <laughs> Ooh, that almost took out. That was almost a very expensive mistake, taking out my camera with a flying log. Alright, since you guys always ask, how in the world do you do this with enough batteries? Like, how are you charging your batteries? This is how I charge my batteries. Uh, what's the name of this thing? Rock Pals. I'll put a link in the description below. You can get it on Amazon. This is a 100 watt panel that uh, folds out and you has ties so you can pin it down. There's a bag on this side. And it's got all kinds of cords and adapters for anything. You can um, join two panels together for bigger adventures. If you're, you know, 
hardcore camper and you have to use your laptop to watch movies at night. <laughs> right? Uh, but I use it uh, to charge my camera batteries. There's three uh, USB ports and I can charge those three things off of straight off the panel, which is the most efficient way. I also have the power pack that you might have seen in the hammocking up the tree and the one I had in Texas um, for the 30 day survival challenge as well as in Canada and I used the solar panels a different solar panel at that point to charge that one and then I'd be able to charge batteries during the night too. She's looking there. She's getting there. That is gonna be, oh, I just got nailed with a pile of smoke in the face. Ugh. Wow, that's early morning stuff. Ooh, that is strong. Uh, maybe a second splash, reduce some of the effects. Immediately made it worse. Looking forward to some afternoon coffee. I'm starting to feel better, those little livers and stuff. Chris cooked up the uh, gizzard and the livers and uh, yeah, I feel it look good. We're cooking, about to put the lobsters on and we'll be able to have ourselves second lunch, second breakfast. I don't know what we're at right now. Where are we at? I don't even know. It's all blending together and... I'll be you. It's because I'm on a hill. All right, you ready? I should be on the hop, top side. I'll dig a hole for myself. <laughs> All right, here we go. The last lobsters and one crab. Here we go. These ones are like pretty much the exact same size, so we don't have to fight over who gets the bigger one. Except for there's only one claw on the crab, and that's all that they are is like one claw. So I'll let you have the crab so you know what they taste like. Okay. It's really it's only meat in the claw. What about the the body? Nothing. Really? They're, I mean, they're for us. There's something compared to most people. Yeah. But uh, no. No way. Yeah. You might want to explain to your people what I'm making here because I don't know if you've covered this. Or oh, not. okay. So he brought a ration. Uh, 400 calories. It's 440 calories per day. Per day, uh, uh, basically, he's just making primitive tortillas here. Yeah. It's a bleached corn flour something, I don't know. Next, noximalization? Yeah, sure. Uh, with um, mm. lot, uh, lot, uh, oh, I can't even think of it. Anyway, it's massive corn flour. Mm -hmm. Look it up. So, the clams were hard to get down. This is not hard to get down. Not in the slightest. I feel like I could eat 50 of these a day. I gotta do something about that turkey. I'm gonna take the turkey after this and I'm gonna cut it in half and grill it on a green grill on both sides because it's just, the wind keeps blowing our heat away. So if we get it down low enough, the flames get on it. We got a little bit of a black spot. And if we go it up too high then, so if we split it in half and spread it down over a green grill, we should be able to get it cooked and we can flip it side to side and it's like a little bit of a Cajun. When you add the adobo. Tropical. Tropical. This reminds me of tropical. Cajun. It reminds me of different stuff for different things. Yeah. It's got like, um, I don't know. But sometimes it reminds me of like Mexican food and yeah. sometimes it reminds me of Chinese food and yeah. yeah. All depends on the critter you're eating, I think, for the most part. Maybe. now and for just three easy payments of $59.99 we'll send you a green grill made by yours truly in fact order within the next 59 minutes and I'll send you two two green grills for the price of one 
Don't miss this limited time offer. You're funny, Zach. That's a wee bit crooked. Coffee break. <sighs> All right, back to it. This is what I've been using, and I'm gonna be using on my adventures for a little while now since I joined the Gerber, they call it Bad Aceter Team. And it's from their, I don't know what they call it, Gator Series or something. And I'm liking it. And what's this thing? From WorkSharp. Work It's a cool sharpener. It's got a rough diamond stone, a fine diamond stone, a ceramic, and then a uh, strop. Chris gave me this one. Loving it. Oh yeah, that'll do. <sighs> ha! Sword or something. I feel like a little kid again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Looking through the camera. Let's see if we can't split this bird. Oh yeah, that works good. Like butter. Only thing that stinks a little bit about this is we'll be more likely to dry it out. There we go. Careful not to cut through my table. Now we got two halves to go on the grill. Last time I did this, I built a big shield around it to block the wind. And I cooked it in like six hours. It was cooked all through. It was a farm turkey, so it was even thicker and juicier than this. But uh, I think the difference is I didn't build that shield. I didn't think it would make that much of a difference. Apparently, it made a huge difference.
Isn't that just marvelous? I mean, look at this. I could just sit right up to the table here. Oh, sit up to the table, eat my food. Feel civilized. I feel. <laughs> I feel so much more civilized now. Does it work at both ends? Oh, it's good. It's so nice. Probably going to come right off. Oh yeah. That looks darn good. Yummy. Chris shot it, so uh, he I gets get the neck. He gets the neck. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Score. That looks nice and crispy. <laughs> Yummy. They look pretty good. That feels pretty darn juicy. I hope it's cooked all the way through. We've been cooking this for like eight hours. Oh, I made you something. You made me something. Yeah. Make me. Chopsticks. Nice. They're special chopsticks. See that? They're stuck together still. They're training wheel chopsticks for people that don't know how to use chopsticks. <laughs> Are you implying I don't know how to use chopsticks? I thought you said you didn't. Um, I don't think I ever said I didn't. I uh -oh. can. I can. I just... Maybe that was somebody else then. All right, never what, mind. What do you mean? I thought I had. Some, I thought I was gonna introduce you to something new, like, but yeah, like chopsticks. Yeah. Um, well, because you would ne I've I used them before, but I don't prefer them. Oh, okay. But that those are pretty cool. They get them to bend correctly. They want to twist. It kind of it works better if you just grab them like a fist. Like like this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or the other way around, but yeah. Because then you can control how they come together. Right. I did that with the. Uh, oh, good. Trail life kids the other day. They had so much fun because all of a sudden they were like able to make bushcraft chopsticks and we did like a whole bunch of competitions like picking up stones and running with them and setting them onto a bench. Zach's really good with the kids by the way. You have lots of kid fans. Yeah. Zach is like a big kid in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Not in a bad way. Yeah. That's the mischief side of my channel. The slingshot shooting and the doing silly stuff. Oh, mind if we say grace? Oh, sorry. Right, no worries. Lord, thank you for this turkey that you gave us this morning and bless us with this uh, beautiful weather in Maine. Uh, slightly less rain today. <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Take How it. is it? It's good, chewy though. Yeah. I mean, you know what? Chewy because it's not done, or chewy because it's like hardcore. Chewy, it's chewy because it's a wild turkey. That's yeah, why. Yeah. I mean, you can make a wild turkey not chewy. Do you know yeah. how to do it? Yeah, to be cooking it in a, uh, <laughs> you know, a, a pot with yeah buried in vegetables. You know. Yeah. So, Slowly. Yeah. Put something on the inside of it with some juice in That's it. That's totally cooked. Yeah. No, it's totally cooked. It's not overcooked. No. It's not. It's just. Uh, it's a wild bird. Yeah. Careful, there might be some pellets in there. Okay. <laughs> Did you find one already? No. Oh. Great. Another thing we gotta chew carefully. <laughs> <laughs> There's our wild turkey. It's very dark. Very, very dark. Sprinkled it with a little adobo, of course. I'm getting a feeling it's going to be a tough chew from all the chewing I'm hearing over there. Mm. There it is. Yeah. Oh, that is so good though. You like it? You haven't said anything yet. No, it's good. It's 100% good. It's just, you know, chewy. All right. You cannot just go and eat it like a drumstick. There's a pellet there. I just pull it out. Right now it's like eating venison, you gotta cut it into pieces. A little slice, cut it free. And there you go. About as thick as a quarter. Mmm. I just really like the product, so. Small. Yeah, well, small speaking company. of which, how many uh, how many things are like that in your life that you put on the YouTube? 
Like people sometimes like like the Warbond hammock. I did the tent right. versus hammock. Right, right, right. And they're like, oh, this is a paid advertisement. You're just trying to sell hammocks. Because you did it so well, you must have got paid for it, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I ain't get a cent for that. My best video so far to date. I, you know, I didn't get. It wasn't paid a thing. It was just because I love it. Yeah. I was having fun. Well, do I use Grumman knives? <laughs> it's the only thing I have. Yeah. So. Yeah, I use it. Well, I plug darn tough socks all the time because I love them. Um, I'm trying to think of the other stuff. How do you like your Gerber knife? I love the Gerber knives. I was plugging um, a Cold Steel a lot with my Cold Steel Ultimate Hunter that I was using. But after I got my Gerber, I don't remember what this one's called, like a fastball or something. I'm like, I like this one so much more. It's fast, I like the blade. And it goes clips under your pocket without tearing your pocket up on your pants when you go to put it on. And this one, it's heavy, it's got a rubber grip that doesn't slip. It's nice. That would be really cool. What? Do like a deep fried turkey. Oh. Like proper. Yeah. You know? In the peanut oil? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Peanut oil. When you deep fry, you use peanut oil. Yeah. It uh, holds a higher temperature without burning. That's a really good job. Oh, pellet. There you go. Eat your veggies for a grown boy. Have you had any of these? No, not, not, I usually have them once a year and they're really strong and I'm like, all right. Wait, wait, wait. These are the best fiddleheads I've ever had in my life. How many fiddleheads you've had before? A lot, and I've oh, had okay. some bitter ones, like you said. Oh. I've had 100% had some some really bitter fiddleheads that I did not like. Try it by itself first. Okay. You believe me? That's like delicious, like green beans. Green beans, you got it, my friend. So, which company makes those green beans? Huh? No? You don't have those? Um What are you talking about? French string bean uh string bean, French string bean? Green giant? Oh yeah. You guys have those? That's yeah. what it reminds me of, except without oh. the flavor. I don't buy green giant. I buy like organic green beans and a bag that somebody personally picked and tied up <laughs> with their dirty mitts. nothing it looks kind of weird I mean it looks very fatty but it does look very weird to me oh it's so weird it's definitely fatty but it's very gloppy not like some sort of fat that melts in your mouth Oh, the meat on the other hand. That's really good. Melts in your mouth. If I'm gonna get down the fat, I'm gonna have to make that into thinner slices and roll it up inside of these pieces of meat or something because that was just, ugh. That was weird. If you've been following me, you know that like I'll take giant chunks of bear fat and just be like, fry them up in the pan, you know. We did that during the last Wilderness Living Challenge. If you haven't seen that series, the Wilderness Living Challenge season four, check out the link below. That was our adventure up there in Canada where we did seven days. Bear, beaver, ducks, grouse, all kinds of cool stuff. I gotta tell you guys, this, this breast meat is freaking awesome. What did you think? Oh, it's juicy, right? It's really good. The breast meat's awesome. Mm -hmm. The breast meat's perfect. Yeah. It's really, you couldn't do that better in an oven at home. Yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah, right out to the edges. I mean, <laughs> there is no, it's not hard out. I mean, that. That's why you keep the skin on and, and pluck it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Most people won't take the effort to pluck it, and then they think wild turkey is just dry. 
But the, the skin does something. It keeps the moisture in the meat. Yep. It's worth the effort. Ah, uh, I'm going to go to bed full and happy tonight. If you're thinking about switching to the ketogenic diet, because I've talked about it in the past and I've shown how much I've lost or maintained a lower body weights. Not lately. I've put more on again. Um, knowing that I'm doing the 30 day survival challenge coming up in oh Less than a month now heading up there with Greg ovens Actually while you're watching this I'll be up there in the Canadian Rockies with Greg ovens. That's why I'm not watching these episodes live with you um, The way we did the previous series that I posted so pray for me wish me luck and I'll be seeing you when I get back I am cozy in my bed. Chris isn't feeling good. Hopefully it doesn't hit me. I somehow always seem to get away with it. I don't know if it's just like I'm more res resilient to this sort of wild food and things that are involved with wild foods. Um, little bugs or uh, I, I don't know what it could be because like this happened before we were in Canada he had I think it was too much fat and it made him sick Texas Chris Thorne we had a lot of fat and uh, he was really sick and it may have been that or it may have been the cactus some people say some people react to the cactus badly um, and now again today um, Chris has hit some sort of a wall. Personally, I think transition time, when you're doing stuff like this, there's a hump that you have to make it over. And it's anywhere from day five to, you know, can last up to like day 13. So, maybe he's hitting that hump like he did last time with the bear fat. His body transitioning to being used to living off of that kind of calories um, this time it's not fat obviously because we're everything is fairly lean but I'm happy to go to bed we had some other plans we we're gonna go and try a uh, sling bow and spear sucker fish um, but our scout said that uh, I sent Chris my apprentice out as a scout <laughs> our scout said that he did not see any in the river I think tomorrow we're going out for squab if you don't know what that is uh, you're gonna have to look it up if you want to know what we're hunting and uh, If you do know what it is leave it in the comments below so I'm going to bed. See you guys tomorrow Thanks for watching <sighs> out. This season of the wilderness living challenge has been brought to you in part by Bath Subaru and Woolwich, Maine LP Avenger for making the adventure mobile a reality Hidden Woodsman Backpacks, the best backpacks made on earth of the best materials. Ayuno Survival Shovel. Gerber Knives and Multi-Tools, made right here in the US. Outdoor Vitals, the maker of my favorite jacket, sleeping bag, and this really cool pillow. And Hoorag, have Hoorag make you a custom company Hoorag today. <laughs> Link's in the description below.